Hi, welcome to Mark's English Academy, the place to learn English fast. Are you from India or Pakistan or Bangladesh? If you are, I want you to listen really carefully in this lesson because I'm going to teach you three sounds that you have a really hard time pronouncing. But I'll also teach you three really easy sounds as well. Okay, if you have an Indian accent, and if you like your accent, and everyone can understand you, then that's great. You don't need to change anything. I like Indian accents. I like German accents. I like Chinese accents. I like African accents. Okay, so accents aren't a bad thing. The problem comes when your accent is so strong that people can't understand you. Okay, and I know a lot of people from India and Pakistan and Bangladesh whose accents are quite strong and people in the West have a hard time understanding what they're saying. Okay, so, so that's a problem. So don't be ashamed of your accent, but if you have a very strong accent, then I'm going to help you try to to lower it a little bit, okay? So in English we have these three sounds d, t, and n. Now the problem is that you, if you're an Indian or Pakistani or whatever, you have two sounds for each of these sounds. You have a front sound and a back sound like this. D and d. T, t. N, n. Okay, in English, we don't have any of those sounds. Those sounds don't exist in English. In English, we only have d, t, and n. Okay, so imagine this is the top of your mouth. Okay, here are your teeth and your tongue is like this, okay? Now, when you say d, your tongue is coming too far forward, and when you say d, your tongue is back here, d, d. All right, in English, it's in the middle. In English, it, the tip of your tongue, d, it's just a little bit behind your your front teeth. Okay, so it's, it's not too far back and it's not too far forward. So it's about here, d, d. It's not d, d, or d, d. It's just here in the middle, d. Okay, also for t. It's the exact same place, t, t. It's not t, it's not t. And n, n, n. It's not n or n. So keep your tongue in the middle. This is so important if you want to, if you want to have a, a normal English accent and decrease your your Indian accent. Okay. D. Keep keep your tongue. If you're tempted to move your tongue forward or backward, stop. Don't move your tongue. In English, our tongues are lazy. In English, my tongue just does this. It flaps up and down. D, t, n. For you, you go n, n, d, t. You know, there's so much forward and backward. In English, it's not. It's just in the middle. So, I don't know what you can do 
to stop your tongue from going back. In English, we don't have any sounds where our tongue is like this. Never. Our tongue, my tongue, when I speak English, my tongue never curls back like this. Duh. Never. Okay. So, just somehow keep your tongue in the middle. Okay. If you have to get a nail and hammer your tongue down into the middle, then, then do it. I don't know how, but that would prevent your tongue from coming up. D. D. Just D, not D. So find a way to keep your tongue down and keep it in the middle. Okay, that's the most important thing you can do if you want to lose your Indian accent. Okay, now I thought of as many words as I could with these three sounds and I put them into a sentence. So, this is the sentence. In 1999, David invited his friends to stay the night in his new apartment in Toronto, Canada. They drank till midnight, then said goodnight. Okay, so that's how I would say it. Now, an Indian or a Pakistani uh, would say it like this. In 1999, David invited his friends to stay the night in his new apartment in Toronto, Canada. They drank till midnight, then said goodnight. Okay, so when I just read that, my tongue was back here the whole time. In 1999, 1999, okay, so try to keep your tongue in the middle. In 1999, David invited his friends to stay the night in his new apartment in Toronto, Canada. They drank till midnight, then said goodnight. So here I have all the sounds. All right. Uh, so in, we've got N, we've got lots of N's here in this 1999. Nine, 1999. Now, when we say the sound, or when we say the word 90, uh, we say d, not t. We don't say 90. We say 90. Okay. Um, also, in other words, this happens quite a bit. Like, for example, in this word, invited. Okay, I wrote a two here for the T, but I mean, actually, we would say, probably say a D here, invited, invited, right? When the word invite has an ending like ED or ING, then the T kind of turns into a D sound, inviting or invited. But if it stays as the, the verb usually is, to invite, uh, if I say, I'm going to invite you to my house for, for supper, then it stays the T, invite. So sometimes, you know, the sounds change a little bit depending on the word. Okay, so here we have another N, friends, and to stay the night in his new apartment. Now, this word, apartment, so there's a T sound here, but actually that T kind of disappears. Listen, listen to how I say it. Apartment, apartment, apartment. So my tongue is almost going to say the T, but it doesn't quite. Apart, apartment. When we say it fast, there's no, really no T sound there. Uh, in Toronto, Canada. Now, this word, Toron Toronto, some people say Toronto, some people say Toronto, and they don't even say the, the second T. Um, it's your choice. Canada, not Canada, it's Canada. 
they drank. Now, when the D sound is in front of an R sound, drank, listen to how I say it, drank, drank, then the D, R kind of turns into a J sound, J, drank. That just happens when we say it fast, the D and the R sound, but it is a D sound, D, drank. Okay, uh, till midnight, then said good night. Okay, so there you have all your sounds. I hope that's helpful for you. Just try to keep your tongue a little bit lazy. All right, lazy, you know, our tongue does this. No forward, backward, t, t, d, d, n, n none of that. It's very lazy and it stays in the middle. So remember that and I think your pronunciation will improve a lot. Okay, next I'm going to teach you three really easy sounds. But first, it's sponsor time. This lesson is brought to you by nobody. Instead of watching me play Punjabi MC on my balalaika, you could be watching me promote your product or service. Okay, these three sounds are much easier than the last ones I taught you, so don't worry. I think these sounds are some of the most common sounds around the world. Okay, like, like the sound hmm, hmm. I think almost every, every language has this sound and it's very common. For example, uh, the word mother. Mother. In most languages, it has the M sound. M. Okay, in English, we have mother, mum, mummy, mama. In, in other languages, like uh, what is it? mata, muta, ami. Mor, madre, uh, ma, omani. So many languages have the M sound in the word mother. Okay, it's an interesting fact. Uh, so the sound S, S it's the same. Uh, almost every language, I think, says this sound the same. S and M. Mm. There's only one way to say this in any language. M, S. So you're probably saying it right. So you don't need to change any of these sounds. And the third sound, F. F. I think it's, it's the same in, in most languages. So, so that's good news. You don't have to, to worry about these sounds because you're probably saying them correctly. All right, so I won't teach you how to, how to move your mouth or your tongue because you probably are doing it right already. Uh, but let's just read this sentence uh, to, to practice. So, Cindy makes far fewer grammar mistakes than most students from Finland. Okay, so here we have s, m, s. Mm, mm, s, s, mm, s, 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 f, mm, f. Cindy makes far fewer grammar mistakes than most students from Finland. Okay, so leave a comment down there and tell me how you say the word mother in your language. And I'll see you over in the next lesson. Take care.